December 6, 1972. Eugene Cernan, veteran astronaut and commander of Apollo 17. He would be the last Apollo astronaut to stand on the surface of the moon. Dr. Harrison Schmidt, better known as Jack. He would be the first geologist to set foot on an alien world. Ronald Evans, command module pilot. He would remain in lunar orbit, operating a battery of experiments that would take this last close look at the moon. In the year 1675, Sir Isaac Newton was asked by his fellow scientist, Robert Hooke, how he had accomplished so much. If I have seen further, Newton wrote, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. automatic done by the sequencer. One command, pressurized the S4B stage, was not given. And despite the fact that it was going to be done manually, the sequencer, in effect, said, uh, I didn't tell you to do it, and therefore you can't be doing it. So at 30 seconds, it very properly stopped the operation. Uh, most of the work was being done right off the firing room in the launch control center at Kennedy. However, there was a great deal of support from the Marshall Space Flight Center, who had a comparable operational group working there with their contractors. So we concluded that we were safe, and we gave the word uh, to jump out to one signal and proceed, uh, which we did. After checking out the spacecraft in Earth orbit, they burned out of orbit and headed toward the moon. Houston, we're right in the middle of a snowstorm. We're not there long with Ron Evans, at the controls of the Command Module America, moved in to dock with the lunar module, Challenger. They pulled Challenger free of the booster's third stage, then continued the three-day coast to the moon. Even as Cernan, Evans, and Schmidt headed toward the moon, directly below the Apollo 17 control room, flight director Don Putty ran his crew through a launch simulation for the first Skylab. Uh, as you're probably well aware, we are still working on other programs, Skylab being the prime effort starting in the spring of, the, of uh, next year. Uh, we're also working on the uh, cooperative mission with the Russians, which will take place in 1975. And, of course, we've got quite a few of uh, the flight control team as well as other center elements involved in the work on the shuttle. So it's, it's the start of a new era, I hope. Skylab, of course, will fly in the spring of next year with three men going up and spending 28 days. And then two months later, after they land, we'll put three men up for 56 days. They'll come down, and 30 days later, another three will go for 56 days. So a year of... Uh, 73 calendar year will certainly be a busy one from the standpoint of manned space flight. December 10, 1972. America and Challenger went into orbit around the moon. Houston, this is America. You can breathe easier. America has arrived on station for the Challenger head. 
The next day, December 11th, Cernan and Schmidt entered the lunar module and undocked. You look just as pretty in Earth light as you do in uh, sunlight. Roger, uh, America. Have a good bird. With the command module in the distance, they passed over their landing place, a valley in an area of the moon called Taurus Litro. Here they hoped to find the youngest material yet sampled and direct evidence of lunar volcanoes. You're looking real good, Gene. Right down the line. Oh, man, we're level with the top of the Massif now. Okay, stand by for pitch over. Oh, are we coming in? Pitch over there it is. is. Proceeded. And there it is, Houston. There's Camelot. Wow. Right on target. I see it. We got them all. 42 degrees, 37 degrees to 5,500. 53 degrees. Okay, I've got Barre, I've got Poppy, I've got the triangle. That 2,500 feet, 52 degrees. H dot is good at 2,000. H dot is good. Fuel is good. Going down at 10, cut the H dot. The fuel is good. 110 feet, stand by for some dust. A little forward, G. Move forward a little. 90 feet. Little forward velocity, 80 feet, going down at three. Getting a little dust, going down about two. Very little dust, very little dust. Stand by for touchdown, stand by. 25 feet, down at two, feels good, 20 feet. Going down at two, 10 feet. 10 feet, that contact, that push, engine stop. Okay, Houston, the Challenger has landed. Roger, Challenger, that's super. Houston, you can tell America that Challenger is a Taurus Littrell. December 11th, Cernan, then Schmidt, left the lunar module to begin their first EVA. As I step off at the surface at Taurus Littrell, We'd like to dedicate the first steps of Apollo 17 to all those who made it possible. Their first job was to unload equipment, including their rover, the electric car in which they would drive to the exploration sites. That's beautiful. This has got to be one of the most proud moments of my life, I guarantee you. We thank you very much. As Cernan drove the equipment-laden rover, Schmidt carried the scientific experiments package called ALSEP. Hey, do you need me, Gene? Yep. I'm going to go deploy an ALSEP. Have at it. In Houston, scientists in the science support room watched, correlating and directing their movements. Okay, Bob, I've got my tools of the trade right here. As Schmidt set up the various experiments, Cernan drilled a series of holes, both to collect core samples and to implant experimental probes. Yeah. Oh, we're, out, we're out in the ejecta blanket of Camelot for sure now. Yeah. Man, it didn't feel like this stuff was that hard. No, I'll get it. I knew there was something I needed to do. Get the jack in over here, other side. Let me, let me uh, put some weight here. Going oh, he's going slowly, Bill. Very slowly. I'm going to get this thing out now that I got it. 